Now we're recording. Sorry for the ones that are now joining. I just now hit record. Uh, it's all right, Michaela. I don't worry. I just hit start record, so you really didn't miss anything. Um, and I'm going to apologize because I hate this chapter because I can't speak real good English and it's going to show. Um, uh, come on, let's change. All right. So, um, how the part of the term combines the terms of meaning uh, is very important. Knowing anatomy and context and how the words are used can help you correctly determine the spelling. Uh, determine the meaning, also the spelling is the term to give in situation. Um, knowing anatomy of the body, uh, like phalanges are the same thing as your toes, uh, where your tib fibs are, because you don't want to be like the lower uh, lower, you re start referring to the lateral leg, uh, lateral right leg, and you, in your mind, you're saying the right turns, but you're writing like where the femur's at, and you're like, that's, that's, that's not the same body part. So knowing the anatomy of the body is personally helpful. Um, it does help you through the rest of this program, but also at the same time as it helps you push things through with knowledge and moving on through uh, you don't have to take an a &P, which is not in physiology. You don't have to take that into this program. But if you move on into the paramedic program, that's, that's a pre that's a prereq. Um, and it just does you good. It's very helpful. All right. So the word root is the main part of the stem uh, of the word is called a word root. Uh, conveys the essential meaning and it frequent, frequently indicates a body part. Um, add or change a prefix uh, to or, or suffix to change the meaning of a term. So here we go. So cardiopulmonary breaks it down into two areas. So you know exactly where you're talking about. Cardio means the word uh, root word is heart, and pulmonon pulmon is the root meaning lungs. So like a hemonumothorax. So hemo is is air, pneumo is, uh, hemonumo is, uh, you have air and blood inside the lungs. And that's not, it's, you need to know that instead of writing it out, it's easier you use the correct words. Some root words can also be prefixes or suffixes or other terms. I'm not asking y'all to write a report about this, but knowing the history of these words and why they're made is very important. A prefix is the part of a term that appears at the beginning so we know that from being in school, uh, even in grade school, they taught us that, that prefixes, suffixes, vowels, nouns, adverbs, adjectives. I'm sure that I've missed something, but who's judging? Um, prefixes usually describe the location and intensity of uh, what's going on. A prefix gives the word root its specific meaning. Uh, by learning the common used medical prefixes, you can also figure out the meaning of terms that may or may not be familiar to you. Um, so let's see here, suffixes are placed at the end of the word. Suffixes usually indicate a procedure, condition, disease. Uh, what is that part of a speech? Uh, it breaks it down, um, I think so. And then we're gonna start com combining vowels. Y'all didn't, didn't know this was an English class. Neither did I, but we're gonna push through it. Combining vowel is the part of the term that connects a word root to a suffix to the other words. In most cases, it is an O. However, it may also be an I or an E. When joining a suffix that begins with a constant or when joining another word root, the combining vowel helps ease the pronunciation of the term, not in my case. A combination of a combination form is combining vowel shown with the word root. I don't know what else to say. It's just, it's embarrassing at the same time because I try so hard to stay on top of things and this particular chapter and all this is just drives me insane. Um, it's one of those that I really want to contact somebody that's a lot better at this than I am and teach this chapter, but uh, nobody wants to just teach this. The following summarizes the rules covered thus far. The prefix is always at the beginning of a term. However, not all terms will have a prefix. The suffix is always at the end of the term. Use a combination vowel 
Um, a suffix begins with a constant. It makes the pronunciation a little bit easier, but again, here we are. A term has, a term has more than one word root. A combined vowel must be placed between the two word roots, even if the second root begins with a vowel. I have no idea how to give y'all an explanation of that. I laugh through this chapter because I'm just, I'm not the best in English to begin with. I've taken English one and two twice and still where I'm at. Pulmonary endings, plural endings. Ooh, I see, I just want to call it pulmonary. We'll talk about the lungs. All right, to change the term from a singular to a plural form, certain rules apply. Sometimes you can simply add an S, uh, long becomes lungs, but some rules are more complicated. Rules you may encounter when cover, converting from singular to plural. Oh, singular words that end in A change to A when plural with an AE. Uh, Sydney, I don't have one. I can't answer that question. I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe somebody else can answer that me. Um, oh yeah, I was just I was just putting it in for the uh, classmates no, to answer. I'm sorry. I know, baby, you're good. Um, actually, I can show you if you have if you bought the book, you can actually get a copy of it um off of JB Learning, and I plan on going over some of that too when you get in there, in case you're out and about and you forget your book, you can look it up on JB Learning, and I'll show y'all. Um, let's see here. Singular words that end in is change to es in plural. Singular words that end in ex or ix change to isis, isis. Singular words that end in on or um change to a. Singular words that end in us change to i. Again, there's you some, some examples, thank God. I know what vertebrae versus vertebrae is, diagnosis, diagnosis, appendix, appendices. Uh, ovium to ova and bronchius to bronchi. Um, I, I can tell you those. I know those. I know where they're all at, but uh, English is not my best. Um, prefixes can be used to indicate numbers, colors, positions, and directions. Um, several prefixes are used to indicate if a term involves a number such as half, one, or two, or more parts or sides. Uh, examples, una, dipla, null, prima, multa, and bi. So a lot of the, you will see the, a lot of that as we continue and using some of the medical terms. Those are your prefixes on a lot. Several uh, root words can describe colors. Uh, so trying to like, C-Y-A-N, you can be cyanotic. Um, trying to think of some other examples on some of the other ones without going too deep. But again, y'all heard me. Prefixes can be used to describe a position, direction, or location. So oh, I need the words to show y'all. I'll bring, uh, again, when I pause, oh, this one's super short. I'll pause it. We'll go over. Uh, when I go find it on my, my main computer here, we'll go from there. Uh, so you have directional terms, uh, where an injury is located, how the pain's related to the body. Um, so you remember your right and left. So I hope to God you know your right and left. Superior and inferior, uh, lateral, medial. Those are important. You need to know those. Uh, we'll talk about, I think we break those down. Proximal and distal, superficial and deep. Um, that one's pretty easy. Like a superficial cut's kind of like a paper cut, even though we all hate them. And a deep cut, obviously, it breaks through the first and second layer of the skin goes down to the third layer or you're even deeper. And you may have at that point some tissue and bone exposures. Um, some directional terms, ventral and dorsal. Uh, dorsal is your feet, just letting y'all know. Uh, palmar and plantar and, and ap apex. The terms right and left refer to the patient's right and left sides, not your right and left. So just remember that when you look at a patient, your right is their left. So if you're gonna say, their left arm hurts, it's gonna be on your right side. You always refer to the pain upon the patient. Um, if you have to turn around and look away and say, okay, it's their right side, okay, it's all right. Just do it, but know 
you got to refer to the patient's direction. Uh, superior and inferior. So here we go. So the inferior is, superior is near to the head, inferior is further south. So I would definitely remember these. These are very important. Um, superior, inferior. Uh, so examples. So where is it at? So the, the terms to describe the relationship of one structure to another. So the knee is superior to the foot and inferior to the pelvis. So somebody tell me what that means. So if the knee is superior to the foot and inferior to the pelvis, where is it? I can pick on somebody. And also middle. There you go. Thank you, Dominic. I appreciate that. Screen lights up and shows me who's talking. I kind of like in this display here. I started on my two little screens where everything just blanks out. All right, so the lateral medial. So the lateral is the outside of the body. So it's like, here's my shirt. It's lateral to my skin. The medial is the inner. So that would be the fatty tissue is the body that lies closest to the midline. So um, proximal and distal. Uh, it's described the relationship between two structures. Uh, on, extremity, on an extremity, proximal, describe structures that are closer to the trunk. Now, here's my trunk. This is my core. The trunk is my core. Distal describes the structures that are further from the trunk or near to the free end of the extremity. So, the picture I want to put them down. Are we on the same page here still? Maybe. Um, superficial and deep. Uh, superficial means closer to the Closer to or on the skin. Uh, deep means further inside the body, tissue away from the skin. It's sometimes easier. Ventral and dorsal. No, we don't have dorsal fins, so y'all don't think that. Ventral refers to the belly side of the body or the anterior surface of the body. Dorsal, dorsal refers to the spinal side of the body, which means my back, or the posterior surface of the body, Think of the dorsal fin of the dolphin, which is on the back. Kind of breaks it down. Yes, I can slow down the slides, not a problem. Uh, would y'all like me to back up any if y'all want to write anything down? I'm sorry. That's good. You, all right, good. I'm going to make sure. All right, so the ventral. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll slow down. Uh, so the ventral or dorsal. So this is more commonly used as an anterior. Uh, it's to the front. Um, I got your message. So the more commonly used terms are the anterior is the front of the surface of the body. The posterior is the back surface. So here, so when you start writing reports, I'm gonna, we're gonna wanna know, is it anterior, posterior, midline, uh, medial, inferior? Those help describe more of the, uh, of the complaint. Um, so, you know, you have a compound fracture. Uh, hold on, let's just do this way. So patient is complaining of posterior pain, which is gonna let me know it's gonna be to the back. Um, or it can be medial, I can say the dorsal side. Um, I, have a, I have a diagram that will break it to uh, what line and, and what, what line of the body because it, it breaks it down even more. Um, if it will help, I will email you these slides because this chapter is not my friend. Um, I can try to email all you guys these, these slides, if that would help. I've had somebody already tell me to do that, so all right, we can work on that. It'll take me a little bit, but I can work on it. Um, the palmer and planter. This is the front region of the hand, so obviously the palm, and then the planter is the bottom of the foot, because you know everybody talks about plantar fasciitis. Well, um, you, you know where it's at. Uh, yes. The slides are in JB Learning. There you go. Um, somebody has played around in there. Some of the slides are. Um, some of those I take out because I edit 
selected some of the chapters, so uh, I don't put all the slides into the JB Learning. So later on we go, the more the more of it I just don't put in there because there's some information that's in those slides that are outdated that we've asked for them to update. So I just hide all of them. Um, all right, so we back to this. So obviously the palm, we know that, and the planter. Uh, I don't know if I've ever written too many times it says planter surface. That shows the bottom side of the foot, but you just have an idea of where the planter is because of plantar fasciitis. That's just the way I remember it. And if you don't know, plantar fasciitis happens on the bottom side of your foot. All right, so the apex, um, apex is plural. Apex is the tip of the structure. For example, the apex of the heart is the bottom inferior portion of the ventricle. You don't know where that's at. I know we'll go, I we have a pretty extensive cardiologist chapter. No, you're gonna hate me because that's, that's a long one. Um, there's, speaking of, there are several chapters that we will go over that I will break up into two nights. Um, so again, that's the reason why some of your, that's the reason why I don't give out a class uh, schedule is because as soon as I set a class schedule, something will happen and I won't, I'll have an emergency and won't be able to do it. Or we go two nights in a row or I'll just suspend the class for this evening. Um, I have, we have dates that we can throw into there which can say, hey, tonight's a bye night. You get, a, you get an off night. Um, kind of chapter two to three, I'll probably throw an extra one in there, which will give you guys some longer time to study because it's, it's pretty hard, chapter two and three. Chapter three is where you see that I'm just kind of draw the line. It's like, nope, sorry, you get what you get. Um, it's not to be ugly. It's just I'm trying to get y'all more prepared for registry. All right, so this is where it gets pretty neat to me. So flexing is the bending of a joint. So the joints can only flex. So we know that this is a, this is a joint. So I'm flexing here and then I'm extending it. Uh, adduction and abduction is more is when I bring it towards the midline and, I, and then I move it away. Now, we're not talking about abducting you, but abduction and adduction. Make sure those are pretty well that you may want to know which one's going where, uh, the flexing, extension, and all that. Because uh, when we get into seizures, uh, mental like brain seizures, full body seizures, we'll talk about like are they uh, are they posturing, and that'll be more towards midline. Is it the celebrate, celebrate? Um, and we want to know. And I'll ask you which which way will you start to see flexing? Will you see it towards the core? Will you towards to see it the back? Uh, Kristen says, think of the leg machines at the gym for adduction and abduction. Hey, there you go. Perfect. Um, so it breaks things out for us. So these just kind of give you, we, we're giving you tidbits information to push on, and then uh, it's able to get you that information out there. Um, some other directional terms, you have bilateral, unilateral. A body part that appears on both sides of the midline is bilateral. So you think about that. Structures inside the body also appear on both sides of the midline. Uh, something that appears on only one side is the said to be unilateral. Use the terms properly so that other medical personnel can care for the patient, which will know immediately. Because if you say, um, let's see here. So which is the heart unilateral or bilateral? Emma, you want to guess? Unilateral. Okay, because it splits to the body. Uh, midline will split it. Now, it's not fully uh, unilateral or bilateral, um, but it, it, it sits more towards the one side or the other. But you'll get part of the tip. Or the, right, the right lobe. All right, anatomic positions. I use these on a daily when I write reports. Uh, I have four reports to write from today. It's kind of why you see a t-shirt on instead of my regular shirt because it's been one of those days. All right, so these, I would definitely write these down. Y'all ready? Prone, supine, and semi-reclining. Prone means you, you lay prone in your bed if you're looking at your ceiling. If you lay supine, that means you're facing down in your bed. 
semi reclining. Y'all tell me what that sounds like. You're in a recliner, you're kind of sitting at about a 45 degree. Um, those are your uh, prone supine fowler. We'll talk about in the next slide is uh, semi fowler and high fowler. But 90% of the time when I write a report, you know, patient was found prone uh, on the ground, appeared to be uh, you know, thrown from the vehicle or you know, patient was supine. Uh, it, it's one of those that I want to describe. I said that backwards a while ago. Prone's facing down, uh, supine's facing up. I said it completely backwards a second ago. But those are going to be like knocking on the table. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but that's what you're going to want. So semi fowler, high fowler. A uh, semi fowler, like I said, is about a 45 degree angle. Uh, a high fowler is like me sitting in this chair. I'm sitting at a 90 degree angle. I make a good L shape. Semi fowler is kind of like at a 45. Um, you you'll see that. Um, that's important if you get uh, start transporting. Uh, when you if you're ever hired on with the ambulance service, or if you ride in with the fire department, or I mean fire guys ride in with the ambulance, and you end up writing a paper report later on after it's over, you you're gonna have to put which way did the patient be transported, and that's important because you just want to be like, oh, patient was transported to facility, in what what position? I'm just trying to figure out. Did you just throw them in the box, or what'd you do? Um, and remember when you write these reports that if you don't write it down, you didn't do it. Um, I'm not, I don't really care if you testify and say, I did this, this, and this. They're going to hold up a piece of paper and be like, well, your report does not dictate that. Um, they'll get you. So again, if you don't write it down, it did not happen. Use the meaning of a part to describe the term. You can. You can, uh, while trying to define a term, begin with the suffix and work backwards. I mean, if the term also contains a prefix, define the suffix and then the prefix and then the word root. Here are some examples. On the next page. Neuropathy. So we know it. Neuropathy, that's how you break it down. So, Pathy means a disease. We know how to break the, the, the combining word is O, um, and then nephr means kidney. So neuropathy is a disease of the kidney. Um, you have your neuropathist. Uh, you have your, what is that? The blood doctor. I was just talking to a specialist today. Starts with an H, but the um, only reason to know that is because I have to go to the blood doctor for some odd reason. Um, so when you get these words and you start realizing it's like pathy, and you know, like, oh, well, I remember that. It's a disease. And you have to kind of break them down. And they, they tell you to go backwards. One of those, I just try my best to remember certain key terms of the words will uh, help me break them down. Oh. Dysphoria is a condition. Uh, Ia is a condition of. Dys means difficult, painful, or abnormal. Ur means urine. So uh, dysuria is a painful urination. Um, could be kidney stone, uh, bladder infection. Uh, it could be all sorts of things. And, you know, unfortunately, in the medical field, a lot of people will think it could be related to an STD. Um, but again, get some information, uh, build a report, uh, build an idea. You don't want to automatically be like, oh, it's really painful when I urinate. Huh. But it is. You're sexually active. Those are some of the questions that we ask. But at the same time, as we're not trying to start pointing fingers. So uh, ask questions. They may have a history of UTIs. Uh, most of the time, a lot of your elderly have that. Um, and then, um, some ladies that have high calcium uh, buildups that they just have uh, kidney stones a lot. And that's, they have the same thing as dysuria. So, uh, so let's break this one down. So hyper prefix meaning it's excessive. 
Emesis means word, root word of vomiting. Hyperemesis means excessive vomiting. Uh, been doing this for 20 years. I love it. Been almost whew, a lot longer than that. Been a paramedic 20 years. So I'm not going to tell you, show my age, but about 26 and a half years. Don't vomit around me. Chris Wally just does not handle that really well. Um, a lot of medicine that can keep you from vomiting. You don't vomit. If you vomit in the back of my truck, it's you're, you're not going to feel comfortable the rest of the way because you're just going to ride that way when I have medicine. If you'll just tell me, I can fix it. Uh, I don't get sick when I hear it. My eyes don't. I don't uh -uh. You know, you see it and you get that heatness to it and you start smelling it. Ugh. Done. We're done. All right, so analgesic, uh, ick means pertaining to, an is without or absence of, A-G-E-L-S means pain, so an analgesic is pertaining to no pain. Um, it is, uh, we'll see that a lot. Um, I'm not, a, I don't use that word when I write my reports. I just pay, you know, patient denied any pain. Um, you can write patient uh, denied any analgesic, but at the same time, is that a common word that you're going to use in your report enough to, you know, proper spelling, proper meaning, and how to break it down in the way that you used it? Uh, that's, that's the big part. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so making sure that you, obviously, Shelby, I'm not picking on you, but knowing the, the proper pronunciation and the spelling and the meaning of it will help you through the writing reports and understanding a report. Uh, shorthand used for communication. You do want to do, I talk fast. Obviously, y'all have noticed, y'all pointed that out to me. And maybe it's because I just hate this chapter. I'm just like, next, next. Um, but abbreviations, acronyms, uh, syllables, medical abbreviations, and acronyms, and symbols are a type of shorthand used in communication. Uh, use only commonly understood abbreviations to minimize any misinterpretation. Um, like I said, CC, and it's uh, little c's, not uh, big cc's. Uh, the Joint Commission and the Institute for Safety Medical Practices are common, considered two authorities on abbreviations and provide do not use this. Um, I want to say that I have the link to the, because I'm also taking the phlebotomy class that our company offers. Um, in fact, I have two tests to take tonight. Um, so the joint commissions is the ones that gives the, the approvals for the medical facilities. Uh, joint commissions will come in and audit the hospital, but they also provide uh, approved and unapproved abbreviations and word and abbreviations and symbols for the hospital, the medical facility, the nursing home, uh, in general to adopt and those are commonly used or those are excluded from use at all. Um, remember to use only standard accepted abbreviations to avoid confusion. When you use an acronym, you are shortening several words. Using, uh, usually using the first letter of each word makes a shorter term that is pronounced as its own. Be familiar with accepted uses of abbreviations so it says in your jurisdiction or your service area, but make sure that everybody, that if you transport to a medical facility, it's better off that you use what is, is widely known, um, that is on the approved medical terminology, uh, abbreviations, and it's, it makes it better for when like, you transfer a patient and you're using syllables and abbreviations and codes and another facility is like, What's, what's a code 67? I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, sometimes that they may have to ask all those questions again because they're unable to understand your abbreviations. Symbols, it does shorten the time um, a lot. Um, use only accepted syllables to confuse areas. Um, I am going to stop that for a second. Um, let me see if I can.
find that list. with me um while we're doing this does anybody have any particular standby uh any particular questions um they want to ask while i'm trying to find this real quick because it'll help you out all right let's see here Second, I know it's taking forever. I'm sorry. Wasn't fully prepared. I uh, was so busy today, so I didn't have things like I should prepared for the class. All right, let me get back to this. I can share this screen. All right, do y'all guys see my you guys see my email? Yeah. All right, so you see here, so this is an anatomical planes, directions, and terms. So you have to look at this to try to understand specifically. Um, here's an email link to it. Um, I can send you guys that, guys and gals. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I can send y'all that. I'm trying to look over here, look at myself with the cameras right there. Um, that is really helpful. So anatomical movements. So again, talking about where... Um, Sorry, I just went blank with that. Uh, where Kristen was talking about in the gym, the way that the flexions, uh, extensions, uh, same thing for your head. You talk about in your body, which way it moves. Um, we come down. This is not really important right here to us in the EMS side, but we talked about again about abduction and adduction. Um, rotation, lateral, medial. So lateral is outside, medial is inside. We know we talked about the way that it moves. Um, I can't email some of this because um, it is general information out there because it may all be right here on this web link. So if once I click it and check it, if that's right, I'll send it to you guys. Hmm. Let's do that now while you're looking at my screen. No, it's not. All right, so it's something that um, I can potentially print off, scan, and send to you guys. Um, the like again, this is just other information for y'all to have to better help you uh, move forward. Um, it's like planner. So when we use this, when I'm checking for extension, can they go towards the dorsal flex? versus the plantar flex because it's going towards the plantar uh, side of the foot and the dorsal is coming back towards the dorsal, which is in your back. So we want to make sure that there's flexion in the feet, that you have the right movement. If you're unable to do one, could mean a hairline fracture. Uh, we do use sometimes a tuning fork that would also detect us. That's how we do x-ray out here. 
Um, I've used it on some other facilities uh, a lot more than I do it here. Um, inversion or eversion. Um, again, I'll check on these and see if that's the same stuff. If it opens it, if it does, I will uh, forward on to you guys. Look at there. Uh, I can send this to y'all right there. And that way you just have this extra information to where again, that's something that uh, will help y'all out, help you some, give some learning. I can um, share that with y'all in a little while. Um, Proofly, the, uh, so I, this is where, why can I see y'all? All right, so this is where I would try to click the right buttons. And since I don't remember where it's at, I am going to try to figure out how to unmute everybody. And then I would like for everybody to be able to I just asked all y'all to unmute if you would like to help, but I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and I would like for y'all to give some information on feedback. So which of the following components of a medical term conveys its essential meaning? Let me read word that again. Root. Go ahead, say that again. Word root. Yes, all right, so the word root conveys the essential meaning of a medical term. The prefix usually describes location and intensity. Uh, let's see here. Prefixes can indicate color, conditions, body part, or procedures. Color. Color. Is that right? All right, so uh, prefixes are used to indicate color, numbers, positions, and directions about the plural form of the word bronchius is uh, bronchia key, bronchies. That's a good echo. I don't like that question. Let's go to the next one. The statement, the lungs are superior to the bladder indicates that the lungs are closer to the feet, surface of the skin, head or trunk. Head. It is correct. So I'm having to click on different ones to make sure. All right. Movement of the arm towards the midline is referred to flexion, extension, adduction, or abduction. 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 <laughs> A body part that lies closer to the midline when compared to another is considered to be medial, distal, lateral, or proximal. Medial. Let me click on down here. When using abbreviations, acronyms, or symbols, an EMT should be familiar with these used in your agency. Use the only Use only those that are medically accepted. Use them to shorten documentation or all the above. All of them. All of the above. That y'all are paying attention, or either y'all doing some good googling. Um. Let's see here. I before we. That's literally the end of the chapter. I told you it was super short. Thank God. It didn't make me sound that stupid. Um. Do you guys have any questions on or needing assistance with JB Learning? Does everybody need anything? Um, do you want me to? You'll have to unmute yourselves. I just muted y'all back. Do um, you want me to show y'all anything that I can get to JB Learning to show y'all? Is there anything that y'all need? Um, so when I, when I paid for like JB Learning, I thought that I was getting a hard copy book too. I, I um, but I don't. I guess there's no hard copy, is there? Like I'm talking about when 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 you when you pay for the package. Let me check into that, uh, Sydney. I'll have to look. Let me. You know, that was the only thing I was uh, curious about. I just wanted to know if there was a hard book coming, because it's easier for me to use. That was it. 
Oh, and um, I wanted to know from the class, um, the previous class, did you leave a code or something like that? Because when I I logged off for a minute and then when I came back, uh, like everybody was gone. So I don't know. If um, there was a lot of technical issues the other night. Uh, right, yeah, because I didn't sign in or anything after that. Because um, I know whether or not so, I, I need to wait for a code. Um, yeah, I, message me on Discord and I can help you out there. So, um, uh, so when you go, I'm making sure. All right, so I'm, I'm reading some private messages at the same time. So, I when you go to select and ordering your book, there's multiple options on ordering that um, virtual, like you can do paper copy, digital copy. I think that's it. So, so Gabriel says, if you order the digital advantage package, there is no hard copy book, but you can buy hard copy separate. Uh, yeah, Devin just put the code in there. Um, it says, right, but when you're double paying for a book, if you do that, is way correct. Pretty sure you could also find the book, uh, like a cheaper copy on you know, eBay or something like that. Um, the hard copy is like 300 bucks, so you may be able to find it on uh, a past person in the class. There's, you also have that access to somebody that's in our Discord where everybody's at. You may be able to post a message if anybody wants to sell their book. So the good thing is, is they haven't made uh, a new book and I think they're on version 12, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's kind of a good thing. Okay, can I ask you one last thing? And that'll be it. Um, is there a way to download the book from Discord? Is, is there a way to like download it onto your laptop? Um, so there's not that I'm aware of in JB Learning either. Uh, I know how to get to the copy of the book, um, but I don't think you can download it. You can print from the ebook. Um, how do you do that? Or you know, I'll just I'll message you in this Discord. I'm trying to log in, I have different screens that you have to go to. It's retarded. Um, once I get in here, I can try to share my screen and show y'all. If you, if anybody else needs it. Um, so, and I know in medical terminology, the, the slides are there. Um, if y'all would like to look at the slideshow from tonight, if anybody, or if y'all would like them emailed, but you can look at them in the JB Learning side of it, that they are there. I really wanna say moving past chapter one, you don't get the slide options. Um, and again, it's because they, I've done some editing versus the slides I show you has more up to, I'm more of like, I can give you over information. And sometimes I will feed y'all a lot of these other classes that are more, more information than you really need. Um, Earl saying that they got a book for $143 on Amazon, which is really cool. I mean, and again, uh, if you can put a post in a general group chat or general chat in Discord, some of the other students may sell it to you and, and include Mel in it. Um, chapter six, go ahead and tell y'all if y'all have the ability to go ahead and try to study ahead because um, it, it's a really big chapter. Um, it's five. Um, so look at your like. Your ebook is listed underneath there. We have some flashcards that you can go in and, and um, kind of familiarize yourself with that. Um, it'll help you out a lot because this is starting to build into the harder ones. Um, chapter six and seven, and then at the end of chapter seven is a uh, opens up your module exam. And just so y'all remember, just keep that in the back of your mind. You have to be able, you have to past the module to move on to the next chapter. Um, don't forget, 
We have to have all your documentation, all your paperwork there um, before you move on to module two. So you will take um, chapter seven. What is that? Next Thursday night. Um, and you will also open up. So that's the 20th. We'll open that up. I'll have time to look at that. And, and if I'll try my best to be able to just uh, look at that and pass on information uh, before the next lecture, because chapter nine starts mod two. And again, you have to be passing, you have to pass the module to move on. Um, just so y'all know, remember you only have one uh, retake for the module, per module. Um, so if you fail something on the very beginning, just be very careful when to go in because you only get one. And I'm not gonna tell you that you can't use it, but just be very cautious about how far into the program that you, you can save the, re, the, the retake until almost the end. But I'll, I, I kind of stay on you guys. I stay on the grades. I'm looking at them all the time. Um, are the are each of the individual quizzes for each chapter part of the overall grade or the month? Yes, it is part of the overall grade because um, I'm looking at everybody's grades right now. Um, your averages are really good. I mean, everybody's overall, the lowest average is an 82.1 in the entire course. So y'all are all doing really good. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, again, just remember you have the retake. If anybody wants to retake anything by the time you get to chapter seven. But when you get to chapter seven, know that you may end up being taking three tests that night. Um, so if you get to chapter seven and you smoke it, and now you want to use your retest, that's fine. Um, but you also have the module test that opens that night also. Um, remember the module tests are a hundred questions and you're given an hour. Pretty, pretty lenient on that. That's, that's pretty on time wise. It, it, it gives you more. Um, some of them are an hour and a half. The harder the chapter, the harder the modules, I'll give you an hour and a half. Uh, there's further in the road. I think one of my module tests is two hours long just because it's a lot of information. Um, also, I'll go ahead and tell y'all, if y'all are taking a test, um, you minimize it or go to another screen and click on it, move back. Um, I get an instant notification that it potentially shows that you're cheating. So FYI, um, when you're ready to sit down and take a test, know their times, know that you're being watched at the same time. So it, it gives me... Rob and I get an email that there's a potential cheat going on and we have access to go in there and look at it. And every time, every time, every one of y'all finishes a, in a, a test, I get an email and I can look at your grade right then and there. Um, so that's just, that's the way that we monitor and, and proctor you in there. Sometimes they're pretty sensitive and I'll, I'll pick Ashley's the first one on there. And if I get a notification, I may set up a meeting with Ashley and I and we figure it out, we talk about it, what happened here, this is what's going on, I'll share my screen, this is what it looks like, can you tell me what happened, you know, and straight up be like, look, my, my computer died right in the middle, when I powered it back on, I set it up, and it, it may show. Um, I will tell y'all, and I've said it in the emails, and pictures are your best friend. If you have a technical error, um, if the chapter shuts off, uh, if there's JB learning issues, your computer shuts down or you get an error code, take a picture of it and email me. Um, I'm always gonna rule on the side of the student 90% uh, of the time. Um, if it has any question or anything like that, Rob and I speak about it and we go from there. So kind of how it is. Um, I'm gonna give you guys your chapter code just so y'all can have that, but no, Ashley does need to speak to y'all. Um, Again, remember, Ashley is our HR person. She's the one that keeps me in line and Rob in line, make sure we're doing our right stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna give you your code that is in the chat. It is AMJ443. That is your code for tonight. Uh, does anybody, so nobody hang up yet, stay on. 
Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions at all? I don't think you want to talk to me. It's all right. It's okay then. Everybody knows now. No, I'm just picking. Uh, once the mind test opens, do we have three days to take it before it closes? That is correct. So you still have the same time. Um, let me to give y'all a hundred percent answer. Let me look at that, and I will tell you exactly uh, for mod one. It. It opens on January 20th at, at 10 o'clock and, and closes uh, on January 23rd at 11.59. So all of them close uh, at midnight. So JB Learning will not let you take the test. If you log in at 11 o'clock, 1101, and there's not enough time to do it. JB Learning will not let you take your test. And I can see that. Uh, I can see what time you log in, how long it takes you to answer each individual question. So if you call me and tell me, hey, I logged in, it just wouldn't let me take the test, I'm going to log in and see what time you logged in. If you didn't do time management correctly, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, we're all held to standards and I'm a nice guy, but I have to I have to kind of draw the line sometimes. Um, any other questions that I can answer? It's Central Standard Time, so pretty sure. Set it as Central Standard Time. So if anybody's another time zone, you may want to make sure. All right, I'm going to turn the recording off.